Hi guys, it's Ramon here. We're going to be looking at all the guitars that Jimi Hendrix played throughout his career. So Jimi Hendrix was born November 27th, 1942 in Seattle, Washington. His first influences were artists such as Elvis, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Howling Wolf and Robert Johnson. Jimi's first electric guitar was his 1957 Supra Ozark, which his father bought in the uh, Myers Music Shop in Seattle in 1959 for $89. Jimmy actually played this guitar in his band, The Rocking Kings, around 1959, but unfortunately it was stolen from the bandstand at the Birdland Club in 1960. After Jimmy's Supro was stolen, he then proceeded to buy, with the help of his father, a 1960s Dan Electro bronze standard guitar, which he later nicknamed Betty Jean after his girlfriend at the time. Jimmy actually used this guitar in his army days around 1969. It was actually whilst playing this guitar that he and Billy Cox met. An interesting fact was that Hendrix actually invited Billy Cox to um, join him in England when he was invited by Chas Chandler, but Billy Cox refused the offer, instead wishing to stay in America. Also, Jimmy is said to have used an Echo and K guitars while separated from his Dan Electro during military training. So it could have actually been one of these guitars. So this photo from 1962 shows Billy Cox on a Fender bass and Jimmy on a Echo guitar. So while skigging around Tennessee with the King Casuals um, in around 1962, September 1962, he traded his Dan Electro um, valued at $20 at the time. Um, for some kind of an Ibanez electric um, in tennis, which he bought in a store in Clarkston, Tennessee. Um, but he was unable to keep up with the instalments and he basically voluntarily returned the guitar um, to the shop. His actual next purchase was a new Epiphone Wilshire, which was a two pickup guitar with a solid mahogany body and a glued in mahogany neck. Jimmy used this Epiphone guitar in the early days of the King Casuals. And uh, you can see it being used at the Club del Morocco in 1962. Okay, so alleged that Jimmy actually painted the pickguard white at some point. So if you look at, um, sort of check some photos um, of around this era, you can see that it's got block inlays, a white um, pickguard and uh, some P90 pickups. So I don't think this was a standard sort of model. Um, so you, maybe you can leave some comments and let me know what if, if this is different from an actual 1961 standard Wiltshire model. So Jimmy got a gig playing guitar in the Osley Brothers Band, um, and that was for about uh, nine months. And uh, he purchased his first Fender guitar, which was a new blonde 1959 Dura Sonic. After leaving the Osley Brothers in 1964, Hendrix got a job as a guitarist in Little Richard's Band. The next guitar that uh, Jimmy was seen playing was a um, 1950s or 60s Fender Dura Sonic Sunburst guitar. Um, and he used that on a few gigs that he did for um, Curtis Knight in 1965, early 1966. And uh, this guitar apparently was given to him by um, Curtis Knight. And actually Jimmy pawned it sometime after um, leaving for London in late 1966. So actually, Jimmy owned several Jazzmaster guitars throughout his time. And the first one was a pre-CBS model. It was a Sunburst with soap bar pickups. And uh, this was, that was actually his main guitar on tour with Little Richard and, and a few other artists as well that he was playing with at the time. And he did later did with Strats. Uh, he strung this upside down. To add to further confusion, Jimi Hendrix was actually seen with a white Fender Jazzmaster, also with a white um, headstock. And this was possibly a guitar which was loaned to him as he didn't seem to be playing it for very long. And, you know, bear in mind that he was uh, sometimes pawning guitars to pay his rent. So guitars were loaned to him. So they were passing through his... For this gig, um, Jimmy purchased a Fender Jazzmaster. Okay, so the actual guitar that he left on the plane with to the United Kingdom was an Olympic white Stratocaster with a rosewood neck and this was actually a 1964 Fender Stratocaster um, often referred to as Linda. Um, basically the reason for this is that um, Keith and Keith Richards himself says Linda Keith um, actually lent him a guitar that um, Keith Richards had at his hotel at the time in New York. This was a guitar that um, Hendrix was using when he first came to the UK. So there's still some debate because apparently an ex-girlfriend of his 
bought him a similar guitar from Manny's in late 1966. So whether this is the Keith Richards guitar or if it's the one that his girlfriend purchased from Manny's, we'll never know unless we've got some good folk here that are going to leave some comments and uh, leave some more information for us. But anyway, this uh, white Fender Stratocaster with a rosewood neck was actually used on a short French tour um, from October the 13th to October the 18th in 1966. So there were four shows played by the Hendrix Experience. So here's some photos of that. So on October 23rd, the Hendrix Experience recorded Hey Joe at London's Delane Lee Studios. And basically it said that Hendrix was using this white Stratocaster. It can also be seen at a Germany gig um, called the Big Apple Club and uh, also the Bag and Nails Pub in London at the same month as the German gig. So this guitar can actually be seen on a recorded tape for Ready Steady Go TV on the 13th and the 29th of September in 1966. And around that time, Jimi Hendrix also recorded the songs Foxy Lady, Can You See Me, Love or Confusion, Third Stone from the Sun and Red House. So it's said that all those songs uh, more than likely were recorded on this very guitar. Uh, this guitar um, eventually disappeared around March 1967. And the reason for that, it was sort of used as a backup guitar and its last known sighting was at the Roundhouse on February 22nd 1967. Um, after that there's no known photos of Jimi Hendrix using it. The next guitar is a bit of a, an enigma. It was a 1960s Fender Stratocaster and it was black with a rosewood neck um, but apparently it was also used at a gig in Darlington in the Imperial Hotel and apparently this was at the last gig that um, Jimi Hendrix was seen playing this guitar and it's quite probable that it was stolen at this concert although it's not um, verified. So it could be that it's uh, still in Darlington or somebody sold it on. Nobody quite knows what happened to this guitar. It could still be out there somewhere. Jimmy tended to really look after his main guitar, which was the 1964 white Stratocaster, which was brought over from New York. Jimmy was actually spotted with another white uh, Stratocaster, this time with a rosewood neck. Um, this was first seen around February 1967 at the Blue Moon Club in Cheltenham. It could be that this guitar replaced the stolen black one as his sort of replacement or spare guitar in case he broke a string. Jimmy only used this guitar for about a month until March 1967. Okay, so the first Sumba Stratocaster Jimi Hendrix was seen was was around late February 1967. And um, it could be that this one was a 1963 um, Fender Stratocaster Sunburst. Had a rosewood neck, of course. One of the first gigs it was used on was Chelmsford in Essex, where I come from, um, on February the 25th. The guitar has uh, an old spaghetti logo on the headstock, which sort of narrows the date of manufacture down to around mid-1963. The specs of this guitar included a veneer type um, rosewood, and also along with the sort of small headstock and spaghetti logo, that would put it to around mid-1963. It was also used in Hamburg, Germany um, on March um, 18th of March 1967, and there's some pretty good photos as you can see here. So he used this guitar all throughout March 1967 and also on the German TV programme Beat Club. One of the most famous early gigs that Jimi Hendrix did was the Astoria Theatre, where he actually burnt a guitar for the first time. This guitar was actually used up until May the 11th um, at a Paris gig. And uh, there's some videos actually of this gig and you can see um, by that time it had accumulated um, extensive wear. Um, especially on the sort of lower belt and upper belt of the body. The guitar seems to have disappeared after May 1967. As you can see from this photo, Jimmy actually owned two Sumba Stratocasters with rosewood necks. This second rosewood Strat is often referred to as the Astoria Strat, as it was a guitar that was actually set alight at the Astoria London. So again, one of the most famous early gigs that Jimi Hendrix did was at the Astoria London um, on March 31st, 1967. The gig was actually part of the Walker Brothers tour, which also featured Cat Stevens. So I guess Jimi Hendrix wanted to really, you know, stand out here. And that's why he decided to set alight one of his guitars. So this second Sunburst Strat seems to be a guitar which was used as backup. And maybe the, the guitar that he would, you know, tend to sort of smash up and uh, burn. The guitar was actually owned by Tony Garland for a very long time, um, who then put it up for auction and it sold for £280,000. Um, so I'm not really going to go um, and speculate too much about this guitar because obviously um, Tony Garland has sort of, um, you know, given out most of the information. He was actually the press officer or he was um, for Jimi Hendrix. Um, so he was like the PR agent. So there's a lot of information missing about this guitar. 
All we know is that he owned two early 60s Sunburst Stratocasters. One was in pretty good condition, one was in not so good condition, and the not so good condition one was the one that he tended to pour lighter fluid on and burn. So maybe in the comments you can leave some more information about these two Sunburst Strats. Before moving on to other Stratocasters, it's worth just looking at the guitar that Frank Zappa owned and then gave to his son, Dweezil Zappa. This guitar was given to Frank Zappa by Howard Parker, Hendrix's roadie at the 1906 Miami Pop Fest. Basically, this guitar was said to have been burnt at that gig. But the truth is, there was no guitar burnt at the Miami um, Pop Festival. In fact, Jimi Hendrix only ever burnt two guitars, which is quite surprising because even I thought before doing this research that um, Hendrix tended to burn guitars quite a lot. But apparently there was only two concerts and they were Astoria and the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. So those were the only two occasions that actually Hendrix poured lighter fluid onto a guitar and burnt it. Um, the actual one at the Monterey um, Pop Festival was actually white and it wasn't sunburst like the Frank Zappa Strat. So my opinion is that this guitar that Frank Zappa ended up with was the actual guitar that was burnt at the Astoria, London. And if you look at this photo here, you can kind of see a correlation between the guitar owned by Frank Zappa and this one at the Astoria, which they have both have a line um, kind of at the back of the guitar, like a relic sort of a scratch or something. So one area of confusion about the Frank Zappa story is that the strat that was burnt at the Astoria Theatre, Tony Garland, Hendrix's um, press agent, scooped up the remains and placed them in the garage of his UK home. This is the burned remains of a guitar that was burnt at the Astoria concert on March 1967. And it ended up with Tony Garland, who was Hendrix's uh, press agent, and he got the remains and uh, stored them in his garage. Later, a nephew of um, Tony Garland's put it up for auction and it actually sold for $450,000. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me or you think that this is um, a different guitar or you think that Jimi Hendrix did in fact burn a guitar at Miami or another place. The next guitar we're going to look at is often referred to as the Monterey Pop Strat. This actually appeared around March 1967 when the um, experience appeared on Top of the Pops in the UK. So actually, Jimi Hendrix owned two red guitars, one with maple neck and one with rosewood. So the red rosewood guitar was probably made around 1963 or 64 because it has a small headstock and also a spaghetti logo. This was more than likely the guitar that Jimi Hendrix actually painted himself and then used at the Monterey Pop Festival gig on June the 8th, 1967. So the guitar started to be used from May 1967 um, and then it ended its life on June 1967 as that is when um, Jimi Hendrix poured lighter fluid at the Monterey Pop Festival and then he smashed it into bits and threw the bits into the audience. Um, there's actually one piece that has survived and uh, it's actually displayed at the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle. I think one of the reasons why Jimi Hendrix um, actually set his guitar on fire was really as a last result if he really wanted to kind of seek um, some publicity. For example, at the Astoria concert where he was on the bill with other artists or at the Monterey Pop Festival, he'd actually seen The Who sort of smash up all their amps and guitars. So he, I guess he felt kind of the next step or the next level would be to actually burn a guitar. So around May 67, along with the Rosewood Red Strat, he was also using a Maple Neck Red Strat. And this actually can be seen at the Savile Theatre on May the 7th. Um, okay, it's probably maybe used on an earlier date, but that's when we have photos. It was also used uh, on the European tour in May 1967. This particular red strap was actually played um, on the European tour in May 1967. And by the end of the tour, it had actually been cracked because Hendrix had been smashing it on stage, um, especially at the Copenhagen gig. And uh, But it was actually seen at a later date on May 27th. So maybe it was actually put together by a roadie or glued back together by some kind of a luthier or somebody. An interesting feature about this particular guitar is that it had a maple um, fretboard. So although it was made around 64, 65, it must have been a special order as Fender were just concentrating on rosewood boards around that time. But Fender did actually offer maple fretboards as a special order. This guitar ended its life at the Seville Theatre on June the 4th, 1967. It's actually also residing um, at the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle. And if you look at this photo here, you can see that Hendrix has painted it white um, and also written uh, a poem on it as well. So the poem reads, May this be love or just confusion, born out of frustration, racked feelings of not being able to make true physical love to universal gypsy queen of true free express music. My darling guitar, please rest in peace. Amen. 
So the story of this next guitar features one of my favorite artists, Brian Jones, who we're going to be doing a guitar history video pretty soon. So Brian Jones actually gave Hendrix a beautiful black Jaguar, um, Fender Jaguar, which was made in 1965. Its serial number is L65163. It was actually given to Jimmy just before the Monterey gig on June 8th, 1967. And if you actually see um, footage of the Monterey gig, you'll actually see Brian Jones in sort of really cool clothes, sort of walking around like a king um, around the festival. Jimmy's roadie at the time, Tappy Wright, restrung the guitar. And it was kind of used um, backstage a lot um, to jam and for other people to use. Um, but actually Hendrix to Olympic Studios in order to record the tracks Experiencing the Blues and Hound Dog. It would be great to get some of your feedback about this guitar because um, sort of researching this, I didn't really find that much information about it. But um, if, you can, if you know anything more about it, it'd be great if you can write that in the comments. Okay, so the next guitar we're going to talk about is a guitar that Jimmy used at the Monterey Pop Festival. It's actually one of my favourite guitars. It's a really cool looking black strap with a rosewood neck. And if you look at footage from that gig, you can see him using it on quite a few songs. It just sounds absolutely awesome. It's actually quite hard to date this um, Fender for some reason. So I'm not sure exactly the date it was made, but it was probably a transitional um, model. Hendrix actually used this guitar actually after the Monterey um, Pop Festival. He used the guitar at the Fillmore West on June the 25th and also at the Whiskey A Go Go on July the 22nd. This was um, a second of Hendrix's guitars that was auctioned by Tappy Wright, Hendrix's road manager. Um, and it remained in Tappy's hands until 2012. By July 1967, it seems to have fallen out of favour with Jimmy and he started to use another guitar. I think from his early period, this is definitely my favourite guitar. So it's worth pointing out that actually Jimmy had three guitars at the Monterey Pop Festival. Um, the third guitar was actually a Sunburst 67 or 66, actually, um, a rosewood strap. So it had the larger headstock. This was actually used at the Monterey Pop Festival, but it wasn't actually filmed. It, it was actually photographed, but not filmed. So that's why it's kind of not really known as one of the guitars used at that concert. Okay, the next guitar of note was uh, Jimi Hendrix's 1967 white Fender Stratocaster with a rosewood neck and a larger headstock. This guitar was used on all the um, subsequent um, US gigs from July 1967 until he returned to England in October 1967. Later on in 1967, around November time, um, Jimi Hendrix actually seems to have um, got another couple of strats as well. And you can see this photo here at the Opera House in Blackpool. Um, with a couple of white um, Fender Strats. So this main sort of um, white Stratocaster can be seen um, being used right up until January 1967. This actually, this guitar was actually um, used as well in early 1968. And you can see in this photo here with Eric Bird and Noel Redding, um, him using his white 67 Fender Strat. Okay, so let's talk about um, Jimmy's acquisition of this next guitar, which is a Gibson Flying V. This was actually made in 1967. This guitar was probably purchased in August 1967 in New York, possibly at Manny's Music Store. Um, in late August 1967, Jimmy actually returned to the UK and he could be seen using their Flying V quite a lot by then. Jimmy tended to prefer the Gibson guitars for playing his blues songs such as Red House, um, as I guess they kind of evoked more of that sort of Chicago blues sound, kind of B.B. King, Freddie King and Albert King sort of tone. There are some people that say that this guitar was used on the All Along the Watchtower recording, but there's no actual proof for that. This guitar was given to Mick Cox by Jimmy in 1969. He used it actually on the short European tour in early 1967 um, when he was playing in Germany and Sweden and also at the Royal Festival Hall on September the 25th. This next guitar is a bit of an enigma. Um, it's, a, it's a white Fender Strat with a tortoiseshell scratch plate. Um, these were pretty rare um, to get actually in the 60s. Um, and this was actually used in August 1967 at the Hollywood Bowl. And then also a little bit later at the Seville Theatre in London. This guitar was normally used at the end of Jimmy's set uh, when he used to smash the guitar against the uh, speakers of the Marshall. Okay, one of my favourite songs is Spanish Castle Magic. In fact, my probably my favourite album is Axis Bold of Love. And um, this guitar here, which is actually called a Moss Wright Joe Mathis 12 slash 6 double neck guitar. 
this was actually apparently used on that recording. Now, I don't know if that's a fact or not. It'd be great to get some photos of him in the studio recording Essex Bold of Love. But anyway, um, this was quite an interesting guitar and he bought it from Manny's Music Store in New York. Just want to mention that it was never actually seen being used live. Okay, so around February 1968, Jimmy started to use a second white Strat with a rosewood neck and large headstock. Uh, this was actually used at the Fillmore East on May the 10th, 1968, and also the Miami Pop Festival on May the 18th. Okay, let's just talk about the song Voodoo Child because that's one of the most iconic Hendrix songs. Now, the engineer on that session um, at the record plant where he recorded it, Eddie Kramer, seems to remember Hendrix playing a white Fender Stratocaster for that session. Um, those sessions were done around um, April and August 1968, and this white um, Strat was used around that time, more than likely. So it could be that this is a guitar that was actually used on Voodoo Charm. Um, just want to point an interesting uh, fact is that uh, actually a Fender Showman top with a huge cabinet with eight 10 inch speakers was actually used on the track and, and not a Marshall stack. So, um, you know, this could be up for discussion, but that's um, according to Eddie Kramer. This particular guitar has got a bit of notoriety recently. It's a 1965 Fender Jazzmaster, and it was also owned by um, Jimi Hendrix's um, roadie called Tappy Wright who um, again sold it and I think he sold it to um, Steven Seagal and um, and there is a photo of Jimi Hendrix and Samuel Duncan and I think it was restrung by Tappy um, the day he got it but according to Steven Seagal it was actually used on several gigs. This next guitar is a 1956 Gibson Les Paul Custom with um, the really cool sort of our Nico pickups and uh, Hendrix started using this guitar around April 1968. He actually bought this at Manny's Music Store. And as I said before, that he favoured kind of Gibson guitars on his blues songs, especially Red House. This was used exclusively on the Red House song. Hendrix used this on two pretty important gigs, which were the Fillmore East on May the 10th, 1968, and also at the Miami Pop Festival on May the 18th. Another interesting Strat that Jimmy used was a 1967 Blue Strat. It was a 67 or 68, again with a large headstock and a rosewood board. Jimmy used this from late July 1968 until August 1968, and unfortunately it ended up in pieces at um, the Salt Lake City concert. The colour is quite interesting on this guitar. It's not really a dark blue. It's kind of more of a sort of um, light metallic blue. We're now going to talk about my favourite guitar that Jimmy owned, and this is a guitar that Jimmy actually used until his death. Um, this is a guitar he acquired in October 1968. It's actually a 1968 Fender Stratocaster. It's a maple neck and it's got a black body and a large headstock. Around October 1968, this kind of marked the time when Hendrix actually went from rosewood to maple neck strats. If you think about Jimi Hendrix and his guitars, you normally think um, about the Woodstock white strat and also the Banner Gypsies black strat. It was actually first used in California on October 26, 1968. So it's also used on the TV show A Happening for Lulu in January 1969, and also several other concerts in 1969, such as Royal Albert Hall, Madison Square Garden, Fillmore East, and Atlanta Pop Festival. So this is a CBS era Fender Stratocaster. And also worthy of note, unlike the 50s Stratocasters, it actually had um, a two-piece maple neck. So it had like your normal maple neck and then a veneer of maple that was glued on top of it. So there was no skunk stripe on the back. Just like Eric Clapton's Blackie, um, this also had a lot of uh, cigarette burns and started to accumulate a few scratches. The last time Hendrix put this guitar into service was on September the 6th, 1970 at the Isle of Furman um, concert um, that he played with the experience. So if we look at these photos which were taken the day before his death, it's more than likely that this is the last guitar that Jimi Hendrix ever played. So this guitar ended up with Yuli John Roth via um, Jimmy's girlfriend and then later Yuli's girlfriend, um, Monica Danneman. As far as I know, Yuli lives in England or Wales, so I guess this guitar is still based in the UK somewhere. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed part one of Jimi Hendrix's guitars. In part two, we're going to go back and check out some other guitars that Jimi Hendrix played throughout his career. And we're also going to pick up with the Woodstock Strat and another white Strat that he played towards the end of his career, along with some other Gibson guitars. So hope you've enjoyed this. Please subscribe because we're going to be doing lots of videos like this. Thanks very much and see you soon. Take care.